Would I rather play a tournament with Kasha or Dantes as my jungler? Honestly, I think I would choose Dantes. Like, being completely honest, I actually think Dantes might be just as good, if not better than Kasha. The Kasha's Noon is obviously better than every Dantes champion, but the problem is Noon is gonna be banned. So then you would probably rather just have Dantes in your team. Because, like, the thing is, like, you can at least... Dantes will follow calls, you know, and maybe he will pick something brain that... I mean, Kasha will follow calls too, but... I don't know, man. It's a hard... it's a hard decision. They have a Vagar, what the hell? Chat, listen, you take you take Dantes for jungle over Kasha, and then you put Dantes in support. And then you have Tarzan, and you put Tarzan jungle. Boom, what a solution. Okay, so this is my third game today. And you know what I've noticed, guys? Playing three games of rank today? I've noticed that... I believe, I mean, I could be wrong, but I believe E West has finally figured out what I've called... Months ago. Months ago, I guess to be more accurate, yeah, it was a month or two ago. I've called that Enchanter supports are the best supports in solo queue by far. They're the most easiest and the most branded and by far the best supports to play. Supports like Lulu, Nami, Sona, and Milio specifically. And Zilan to an extent. Now why is that? Because if I walk you back through time, Riot has consistently buffed their support item and nerfed um, tank support items and mid support items. So in like, I would say, I don't know, three months ago or whatever, um, I would say that tank supports were very good and also mid supports were really underrated, stuff like Nico, maybe even Hui support and anything like that. Ever since Riot nerfed uh, the support item and buffed um, this Dream Maker item that supports how like, Enchanted supports are just way too OP, which also basically means that we're in a meta where ADC is the most important role in the game, or like, not the most important role, but basically it is very good to play for bot lane. It is very good to get your ADC ahead, because when support, uh, when it's Enchanted support meta, ADC is very, very important. And, you know, this game we have a Jinx and Illusion, these champs are very important. This is when champs like TF become also much better, because TF is a supporter champion that makes your ADC basically better. And, um, yeah, we are in this meta now, and I'm even more scared when 14.10 hits, because ADCs will be even stronger late game, so... I think the meta will probably even go more into this direction, where, where ADC is even more important. You gotta stand behind two minions here so Vagar W doesn't hit you. That was a bad card. I, I don't know why I thought he was in auto range. So guys, Vagar into into TF. That's a matchup. I'm really surprised I'm playing into Vagar, honestly, in solo queue. Like legit, no one picks Vagar ever. So I'm really surprised about that. Look at how he was trying to Q me there, now he lost one stack. But yeah, first few levels... Vagar is okay into TF. But once I get more levels and my wave gear increases... Things are gonna get different. Okay, he had W level 2. You are the top side. Who's the jungler? Viego. Uh, Viego is an okay mid ganker. The button is slow, slightly losing push it seems. Mm, apparently the Lulu could be mid so I'm a little bit afraid of playing aggressively right now. They pick me to be careful. I guess. Vega has two points Q. Okay. Now, since Crab is spawning in 10 seconds, we're gonna know which side of the map. Uh, 
I win this. Nice. I got lucky because I got gold cards on my W. Obviously, if I don't get gold cards, um, I wouldn't kill him. But this is always a Gamba that you can take a TF, and Vega did not respect the Gamba. Now my lane is gonna get Giga free because I'm gonna get Sweetness Boost, which means I'm gonna be immune and Vega is gonna be very gankable. Now I need to base in a safe spot while Vega TP is back, and I'm not sure if he can contest this crab because Nimes is gonna be late. Now if the crab stays alive for the next 20 seconds, then maybe we can. I'm healing right now as much as I can. Flash Cage Vega. Okay, Vega no flash. I mean, honestly, I think he's very easy to gank. I also think it's gonna be very easy to get prior over him. The crab is still not dead, and I'm moving into him. Hello? This guy is trolling. I wanna give my team the kill here, whoever Kindred or Nar. My uh, Kindred will still get the mark. Yeah, it's not good for me to take a uh, kill there, because I just base, and I'm not gonna base for a long time, and they're probably gonna base sooner than me, so they're gonna use the gold batter. On top of that, I make sure I don't have too huge of a bounty. It looks like also our bottling got a one for one trade, okay. Again, it's gonna be pretty simple now. Oops, that was bad. It's just gonna be push into ult bot lane, most likely. Ulting top lane also is not too bad, but I gotta make sure that if I ult top lane, my bot lane doesn't get, a, doesn't get dove, right? Right now, Viego could be mid on this timer. Now there's a pink here. I ward to face check the pink because I don't want to face check Viego. There's a bot side plant up as well. Viego on Raptors. I fucked up. I think I'm dead. Never mind. Vega has no boots. Oh my god, I played that so bad. I'm so sorry. I played that horribly. Oopsie. I don't mind losing a little bit, and it's still an okay outcome at the end of the day, but. God damn, I played that horribly. Let's hope to ignite. Might look something bottling. I'm gonna be first here, we should contest. Dealer. Nice, they went dragon when they can dragon. <laughs> well, we still have mid push, that's not really gonna change the matchup. Me dying, or me not dying, but having to base. Losing a wave. Oh, Vega is going Road of Ages build. Wow, he's gonna be so immobile and have no counterpoint to gold cart. I think that's a really bad build by him. And he's gonna struggle into that. Remember, this Vega still doesn't have flash up because he used it earlier. Button looks extremely diveable. We're gonna kill both of them, so I'm just gonna focus the first target here. Easy double kill for Botlin. Establishing mid diff, I'm going back mid. We know Viego was topside, we know the grabs are gonna die. I kinda wish Kindred would do Dragon here. If Queen Kindred had Quiver, which means her Dragon speed would be pretty good, she should have done Dragon instead of basing in my opinion, but I don't know if she had Quiver or not. So yeah, maybe I'll look for a base soon. Double Q is gonna clear the wave. Yeah, if he's such a free elo in solo queue, I swear. I think this is a good timer to look for a base. If we look at the map, Kindred's just gonna clear camps, right? 
I'm also basically not showing in the map when I'm basing, so they might be like afraid a little bit bot side. Lucian's coming up base, I don't have ult, top lane is under tower, there's nothing really to do in the map. This is when you want to take a base, because I have such high move speed that I don't lose a lot of time running from base to mid lane. And I'm basically almost back on time when minions are hitting in the middle. Oh crap. Oh crap. I think I shouldn't have walked up there. 20 seconds TP. I think I wanna overstay, fake base, try to get 200 gold sneakily, then I base TP. By enemy Lulu being mid right now, enemy Jinx got dove, so it might look again like a bad scenario, but we got ahead of all of it. Yeah, he's being a bit annoying right now, but again, it's not a big of a deal. I don't mind losing a few minions, it's just really not a big of a deal. This guy has no boots and Kinnot is right behind him. It would surprise me if he's not just that right now. I'm gonna try to snipe him with a Q. Playing Vega with no boots in 2024 and stepping. And stepping in front of mid lane is just such a big mistake that you can't afford to make. And a TP. Maybe I shouldn't have. Nah, probably good TP. Vega Flash. I'm down to fight this. Could go on Lulu here. That's a Vega TP, but I still think we can fight. Quick stun into Vega. Now I got Shiralia and this guy has no boots, so you death. If Kindred was maybe, sorry, if Jinx was low HP, I could ult. I can still ult bot lane, I think, and dive her with Lucian. Problem is, I didn't blue card for mana. Lulu is gonna be bot in time, and we don't know if Jinx has clan, so I'm not going for it. Okay. Level 9 means I have permanent push on every wave. I need to blue card for mana. Oh my god. That hit me. Mm, bye Jinx. Actually she might have plans. I have no mana. I'm gonna be fine. I'm gonna be fine. I have a lot of moose spit. But I have no mana. Still good. Lucian's gonna get plates. Jing's gonna lose waves. Still a very, very good outcome. Buy more moose spit. Pop one refillable as I'm going back to lane. Which summon do I want? Clans. Let's go clans. Rare clans pick. And we bot on that again. I'm gonna get him here. There's no ult, this guy. Lulu could be mid soon though. Okay. okay. Not gonna overgrid because I know Lulu's behind him. Okay, Ranger. <clears throat> Lucian's gonna take over mid now. Again, quick base into round bot is the play. We're gonna wait one minute till I get ult up. When I get ult up, we look for a play. We're super ahead on pretty much every champion right now. If I just group with my teammates and gold card anybody on the map, they have no no mercs, Jinx still have no clans. They're going to die. It's all in the cards. Yeah. 
Oh my god! You know I hate when that happens. Ouch. At 15 on ultimate. Not really gonna look to 1v1 Vagar as it takes me way too many combos to try to kill him. Unless he would be freezing, but he stopped freezing. I am. Oh, I'm on a ward. My sustain is a bit of a problem right now. When I get poked out, I'm, I'm, I'm very bad sustain wise with my champions, so. Finding a plant is pretty good, but there's no plant, sadly. Gregor's just sitting still on mid lane. There is a chance they surrender this game in the next 40 seconds. Killing wars as TF is very good because you get your passive off on wars, by the way. So, so you get additional gold. Lulu is on her way bottling. Mm, I could be in risk of a Lulu roam here. I'm playing the fan, so I'm just gonna queue this from range. I know Lulu is bot side, she can only be bot side of the map. Again, quick base. So we run mid out of base with our home guards, and I'm gonna look for mid to top play. Because uh, by the time it takes Vega to push this wave, he's also a very slow champ uh, tower pusher. So we can make a top set play right now with number advantage. However, Vega tip it mid. Vega stunned, can't move. That guy stunned. That maybe has to ult. You wait with stone card till we are at the end of the kindred ult, then you stun him. Alright. Well, that's gonna be it. I think this should be the game. Would be surprised if they don't surrender here because they lost a fight with number advantage. Okay. Now, um, so when you're ahead in League of Legends, right, your minions start doing more damage than the enemy minions. You can see it right here when you click on the minion on top left. You see that the minions start doing uh, more damage. So your minions will always push the waves into the enemy waves. So you're oftentimes when you're ahead, your waves are going to be in a bad position. Right there when I was going at the end of the game towards bot lane, I would be losing minions. Um, I lost a lot of minions and it was slow pushing into them. Yeah, TF always works in solo queue, not much to say. Elo printing champion, this patch. By far easiest and best champion of the patch to play in high elo.